We are now getting a closer look at the consequences of young Canadians not being able to find work. More than 850,000 Canadians under the age of 29 are currently unemployed, out of school, or not receiving any job training. A new report from Deloitte says unless that number drops, Canada will deal with the costs of that untapped potential in more ways than one. Farah Mohammed is the CEO of the King's Trust Canada, the organization that called for this report. And she joins us live in studio this morning. Good morning to you. Pretty shocking numbers, Farah. They are. They're really troubling. And if you think about the future of this country, competitiveness, mm. we need to school up. We need to really get young people working. Yeah. And we're just not seeing that kind of traction. So let's, let's take a look at the numbers. So the latest youth unemployment rate is more than double that of the adult population. So look at your screen right now. In October, Statistics Canada said 12.8% of young people, we're talking about people between the ages of 18 and 24, and 15 and 24, were unemployed. And when you compare that to 5.4% for adults 25 and older. So why is this happening? Why does this gap exist? Well, there are a couple of reasons. One, there's increased competition for jobs. There's fewer jobs. We're not having young people be hired in a way that makes sense. So for example, a young person needs to have three years of employment experience, mm. a graduate degree, a bilingual, and this is a true story here in Toronto, and they want to be paid, they want to be paying those person $20 an hour. So it's not really a place where we're actually cultivating young people wanting to get jobs. If you do look at the numbers, the cost of this is $18.5 billion in a loss of GDP. It's a loss of $5 billion in terms of revenue to the government, and it's 228,000 jobs we could be adding. And this is over 10 years. So if you think about it, we really need to get ahead of it. Absolutely. I mean, your report shows the effects of youth unemployment. It varies, though, right, across mm -hmm. different demographics. Who's most affected? Well, we're seeing uh, those who are racialized, really affected, Indigenous populations, those with disabilities. Um, you know, and what we're trying to figure out is why is that happening? And one of the reasons we don't have a lot of data on why that's happening. So there are a number of different things we can do. You know, government, for example, needs to take a better look at are they incentivizing employers to hire youth who are facing barriers? Hmm. And there are ways to do that, tax incentives. Are they looking at government legislation through a youth lens? That might be helpful as well. There are many things we need to change. In terms of corporations, we've got to figure out what we're looking for from young, young people. An entry-level position mm -hmm. should not require three years, a graduate degree, and being able to speak both languages. It should just, it's not right. So then, what should the do job description say then? Well, it should say entry-level position, right. you know, uh, high potential, wanting to learn, uh, you know, has an appetite to be an X uh, category of work, right. uh, you know, communications or whatever the case may be. So I think we really have to figure out what are the barriers we are putting in front of people. Mm. And young people, you know, it's important that they work. If they don't work, there are mental health issues. Yeah. There are issues around how are they going to be able to support themselves. And for organizations like ours, it's about putting in interventions that make sense. So we have a program called Skills Academy. Mm -hmm. This reflects all of the skills that employers have said they want to see in young people. Critical thinking, communication, how to show up at work, mm -hmm. resiliency. Um, you know, our second program is 360. It's called 360 because it's a 360 degree approach. It gives a young person the Skills Academy, yeah. 11 months of work where they're paid a living wage. And then they get a mentor and they get an alumni. And the last that would part is, so helpful. yeah, and the last part built is, mm -hmm. you know, we have an opportunity to build our network and we can call people and ask for favors. Young people just simply don't have that. So we've built an activation across the country that has young people networking, mm -hmm. learning how to network and then practicing. We have companies that have joined this. So, you know, we have Deloitte, Faskin, um, Canada Life, Roche, mm -hmm. who said, yes, we will work with you on the 360 program. You know, you know what I've seen uh, pop up in some of the high schools uh, in recent years, which I think is so helpful, mm -hmm. and I, I wish that it, they did this across the board, was to build in that network with, you know, yeah. graduates from that particular high school right. to have that extended alumni contact so that if you're looking yeah. to get into whichever field you want to get into, hey, I can tap into this network of people that yeah. went to my school. That just seems like a no brainer, no brainer. right? <laughs> yeah, and no, we have, uh, you know, we did something with KPMG earlier this year. We had a focus on girls in tech, women in tech. Yeah. And we had 100 young people come out for one, 200 for another. And they, they learn and they meet people who are in that business. It is yeah. an immeasurable benefit. And you learn how to network. You do. Too, which is Even invaluable. how to shake a hand or look how at somebody. How to shake a hand. How to introduce I know, yourself, especially right? after all the years yeah. that we've had. Listen, Farah Mohammed, yeah. thanks for coming in Thank to you. break this down for us. We appreciate it. If you liked that video, make sure to subscribe to the Your Morning YouTube feed where you can find all kinds of new content posted every weekday morning.